Hey guys, how you doing? It's Humphrey. Today we're talking about the Acorns app and I'm gonna give you a full review, a full honest review of this app. And we're gonna go through its features, what investment options it provides for you, the types of fees that you might incur by using the Acorns app. And also I'm just gonna give you my general opinion on if it's a good fit to grow your money and my overall rating of the app. About a month ago, I deposited $100 into my Acorns app and today we're just gonna follow along with me as I go through everything about the app. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts about Acorns. This video is not sponsored by Acorns in any way, so I'm just gonna give you the pros and cons of the app, and hopefully you'll be able to formulate your own opinion about whether or not it's a good fit for you by watching this video. So with that being said, let's get right into the features of the app. I'm gonna launch the app on the screen right now, and hopefully you'll be able to just follow along with me as we go. So one of the biggest features of Acorns is they have what's called a roundup feature. Now, if we click into the roundup feature, we'll see right here on this card that every time you use a linked card, we round the purchase up to the next whole dollar and invest that spare change into your Acorns Invest account. What that means is if you have a transaction in you know real life and you spend $19.75, they're gonna round that transaction to the closest dollar, which is $20 and they're gonna invest that difference, the 25 cent difference into the Acorns Invest account. Now, if you do notice here, it says waiting to be invested. I have $4.91 that are is waiting to be invested. So they don't actually transfer the roundup money until I hit the $5 threshold, and then they'll transfer the money from my bank into the Acorns app. Now we're gonna click on the settings gear icon in the top right, and I wanna show you guys something. So right now my roundup settings are currently automatic. So what that means is, is anytime I make a purchase out with my linked card. If I do have a difference that can be invested, it will automatically pull that for me. So that's one of the benefits of Acorns is that it's basically set it and forget it. You just kind of, you, you turn it on and it'll just automatically save and invest for you, which I think is pretty cool. Um, they do also have what's called a multiplier function. Now, if I click on this, you can see I can either choose a 2X, a 3X or a 10X multiplier. But what does that mean? Basically it means Let's say we're talking about a difference of 25 cents of a transaction that I make at a coffee shop. So, you know, I buy something for $4.75, it rounds it up to $5, which is a 25 cent difference. Now, with the multiplier of 2x, it's gonna actually take 50 cents out. So it's 25 cents times two. And so on and so forth. So if the multiplier is 3x, it's actually gonna take out 75 cents. And then also here, <laughs> They have a ridiculous feature, it's 10X. Now this is pretty excessive. In this example, if you did 10X, basically what that means is, is that if you have a difference of 50 cents to invest, it's actually gonna pull out $5. So if you'd like a multiplier, this is just really to incentivize you to save even more. If you are gonna use the multiplier, I would suggest using 2X or 3X. Uh, I find that 10X is actually quite a bit because let's say you go do 10 transactions in a day, and each one is say 25 cents difference to the nearest whole dollar, it's actually gonna take out $2.50 each time times 10, so $25 when maybe you don't wanna save that much. Now next, they have something called whole dollar roundups here with a slider, and this is, I haven't actually tinkered with it too much, but I assume that right here, you could either round it up to the closest 50 cent value, 75 cent value, or the dollar. I just have it set on the dollar. So basically, this is the summary of the roundup feature. This is the most identifying feature, or the most unique feature about Acorns, is that they have this automatic roundup feature. My opinion of it is that it's very good, especially for somebody that doesn't like to save money. This automatically builds it in so that you are saving money on a weekly, monthly, daily basis. A lot of people aren't very good at saving, especially younger people. So if you're between the ages of 18 to 21 and you just downloaded Acorns and you don't even know how to save yet, this is a really good way to save without having to think too much about it. Now, if you are gonna use Acorns, I would recommend having the Roundup feature on or else Acorns is just basically another brokerage firm. But if you do use the Roundup feature, I do recommend trying a 2X multiplier if you can afford it or a 3X multiplier even better. So that's basically how Acorns works. It rounds up your transactions and then invests it for you. But let's take a look at the investment options that it offers. Now we're back on the invest screen here. And as you can see, my portfolio is set to moderately aggressive. Now I'm gonna click into this right here and you have five different options for portfolios. You have moderately aggressive, which is what I'm on. But if we go all the way to the left, we'll see that we have a conservative portfolio, which has a mix of government bonds and short uh, corporate bonds. And then if we go here to moderately conservative, that the investment mix slightly changes a little bit. You start to get some large company stocks, small company stocks, real estate stocks, et cetera. Uh, moderate, same thing. It just kind of changes the proportions around. 
I'm on moderately aggressive, so you know it has 38% of this portfolio is invested into large company stocks. And then aggressive is just mostly all stocks. Now, Acorns doesn't make this super easy to figure out, but basically I wanted to figure out what they're actually investing the money in. So when it says large company stocks, what does that actually mean? If we click on large company stocks, we see that they're actually investing in a Vanguard S&P 500 ETF with a ticker symbol VOO. This ETF provides investors with exposure to 500 of the largest US companies. What I found with Acorns is that they typically invest in index funds and ETFs from iShares or Vanguard, which I think is a very good idea because both of those index funds and ETFs, both of those providers always charge very low fees. As far as the other funds that they invest in, I'm gonna put them up on the screen shortly, but they mostly invest in six to eight different ETFs and index funds. And all they're really doing when it comes to the different risk levels of the portfolios is they're just kind of switching the percentages around. So they switch the proportions of what they invest in large company stocks, for example, in moderate, it's 29%. Moderately aggressive, it goes up to 38%. And then in aggressive, it goes to 40%. Now, is the aggressive portfolio actually aggressive? Well, I would actually argue it's not super aggressive. It's still a little bit conservative, and I understand why they do this. It's because the people that are investing in Acorns are generally there for the long term, and they don't really wanna go broke investing in super aggressive equities and stocks and you know speculative investments. In terms of actually aggressive, aggressive portfolios on a spectrum out there, this is not super aggressive. It is more aggressive than what they offer, but if you want to be purely, purely 100% aggressive, you could just invest all your money into, let's say, one stock or invest your money into the S&P 500 and that's it. But as you can see in the aggressive portfolio, they still offer you some diversification with international stocks, emerging market stocks, and some real estate stocks. So how do these portfolios actually perform? What I did was I just went ahead and I went into Excel and I put in every single thing that they're invested in on Acorns and I put it into my Excel sheet and I tracked what the year to date return is and also what the three year return was to give you an idea of what types of returns that you can expect when you're investing with Acorns. Let's take a look at that. So what I went ahead and did was I just took all the portfolios in the Acorns app and I put them into an Excel spreadsheet. Now, as you can see here, their conservative portfolio invests 40% into short-term government bonds, the SHV ticker, and with the JPST ticker, that's basically ultra short term corporate bonds. So they have a 40 60 mix in their conservative portfolio. And the year to date performance of this guy is 1.17%. And the three year performance is 2.27% to give you an idea. Now, they won't tell you this in the app, which I think is pretty crazy. They should just tell you what the performance is like so that you can get a rough understanding of how aggressive these things are. But they don't really tell you that. And that's why I've done right here is I'm doing this for you guys. So as you can see in the moderate conservative portfolio, if we look at that, the year to date return is 1.3% and the three year return is 5.8%. So what that means is if, is if you had $1,000 three years ago and you invested in the moderate conservative portfolio, you would have gained 5.8% on your money, which is about $58 over three years. Next up in the moderate portfolio, basically what we're seeing is you can see that this year to date, it hasn't done that well. It's basically break even, it's lost 0.17%, but the three year timeline has done really well at 11.25%. Moving on, we have the moderate aggressive portfolio and that's what I'm invested in right now. And the total return for the year is about 3.4% and the three year is 5.81%. Now this is the fun part. Let's, let it, let's take a look at what the aggressive portfolio looks like. The aggressive portfolio you know, you have 40% of your money into the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, which is ticker symbol VOO. And as you can see, the year-to-date performance of that ETF is actually minus 0.42% right here. But over the past three years, it's gone up 10.62%. So the total return this year on this aggressive portfolio is minus 5.93%, but the three year has gone up about 5.59%. So you're looking at this portfolio and you're probably thinking, okay, well, if I chose the moderate portfolio three years ago, I would have fared the best and you would be correct. So even though we have these historical references, they're only just references and it's not like past performance indicates future performance. And just, just a quick disclosure here, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. So what you're seeing right here is just what I do for fun. And this is just my opinion only. So I just need to clarify that. But this gives you a good reference of you know, how well these portfolios tend to do on a return basis. But anyway, this was just a great visual aid. So hopefully this gave you some color and some context as to 
what they're actually investing their money in. Now let's talk about the fee structure of Acorns. Basically, the plan that I'm on is called their light plan. It's a dollar a month and it gives you access to the roundups and the automatic investing. A dollar a month is $12 a year. So let's say you only have $100 invested into Acorns. Well, as a percentage, the fee is actually 12%. That's incredibly high. We don't wanna invest in something where the fee is 12% because let's say you invest $100 into the actual market and the actual market returns 8% you know, historically over the past 30 years, you're actually losing money on just the fee alone. Now, if you have $1,000 in your Acorns account, it's actually becoming a little bit more reasonable. Uh, the fee is now 1.2%, 12 divided by 1,000. But to really optimize Acorns, I think you need to have at least $2,400, $3,000, maybe even $5,000 to justify the fee from a pure investment standpoint. So let's talk about a dollar a month and what you actually get out of it. I think you actually do get a lot of value out of it because not only is it helping you save money passively, it's also investing for you passively. It's kind of like a set it and forget it. And for a lot of people, this is actually gonna be where the value is. Part of it is that you also get access to certain index funds and ETFs that might have actual high minimums at other places. So is the dollar a month worth it from an investing standpoint? Probably not if you don't have enough money in your Acorns account, but from a convenience and peace of mind kind of point of view, I think that the dollar a month actually goes a long way in this case. Now the $3 a month option gets you the later account. What that basically means is it's allowing you to open a retirement account, such as a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA within your Acorns account, but they start to charge you $3 a month for it. I don't absolutely love this option, the $3 a month option, because you can open a free retirement account at other brokerages such as Vanguard.com or Fidelity or even Betterment.com. However, I will say that if you just wanna have all your investments in one place, this might not be the worst option because well, then it's all in one place and you don't really have to think about, you know, I got some money here and I got some money over here. How should I manage my money in my retirement account? And with this, you're just able to invest your money into the Acorns retirement account and choose from their preset portfolios just as you would in their regular accounts. Now with the $3 a month option, you also get access to their checking account. I don't think there's anything set too special about this unless you want everything under one roof. Again, because this option is $3 a month, you probably need to have now at least $5,000 to even make this worth it. I would say even higher is better, so $7,500 or $10,000 in your account to make the fee actually justifiable. So the $5 a month option includes everything in the $3 and the $1 a month option, but it also allows you to open investment accounts for your kids. This is kind of interesting because I think there is kind of just a narrow range of kids that actually wanna learn about investing. And also they have to be at least 12, 13, 14 years old to even understand the basics about investing. So I don't know how useful the family plan is and I'm not really sure I can comment on it because I don't have any kids myself. However, if you're the parent and you're investing for your kids, this might be a really good way to open up an investment account for them without having them do actually anything. So yeah, I think if you're young, you probably just wanna go with a light option. It fits most of your needs and it's not like you need the retirement account from Acorns if you can open one up at a different brokerage. And with the checking account, most people already have a checking account at a different bank. So there's no real reason to buy the $3 month option unless you really want everything housed under one place. All right, so what do I really think about Acorns and what's my verdict? Well, I think it's a really great app if you're a beginner and you just want a set it and forget it type of strategy when it comes to saving and investing. I do think that the main draw of Acorns is still just the automatic roundup feature. For just a dollar a month, I do find the convenience really nice. However, if you're looking at it from a fees perspective and you become more of a sophisticated investor, I would suggest that you do some digging yourself and maybe you can opt for a different brokerage if you really care about fees. If you found this video valuable, please drop it a like and subscribe to my channel. Most of you guys that are watching me are actually not subscribed to me. So if you do subscribe to me, you'll get videos from me every single week on personal finance. And if you tick the notification bell, you'll get notified whenever I drop a video. And I really appreciate everyone that's been watching me and supporting my channel. All right, that's it for now. Thank you guys, see you later.